This is a video produced by Bridging Humanity and today's title is the five essentials that you need to survive in the wild. So these are basically five tips that you need and we consider them to be the, um, the non-negotiables. These are the five things you need so that you can survive in the wild. Now what Bridging Humanity does is we try to show others how they can survive uh, usually by making things from trash or making things that are available to them and in particular people in developing countries. So what I want to do is give you a brief little overview. I want to tell you what are the five things that you need the most so that you can survive and we're doing this uh, in order of importance and so one of the most important things is water. You have to have water and so we're going to show you how you can um, clean water and purify it so that you don't get sick. And then the other thing that's important is obviously food, which you want to eat sparingly. And we have done a video that actually touches upon some of the edibles that are um, out in the wild, so you may want to look at that one as well. And we also have one on purifying water that goes into depth, but this is just basically going to show you the tips for the easiest things that you need to do to have clean water, to have food. When you uh, are in the wild, you want to eat small quantities of food and sparingly because the larger uh, quantities of food you eat, the more water your body requires uh, to process the food, so you need to eat small quantities and sparingly. Um, and I also wanted to cover some tools, and we're going to cover as well how to start a fire, and we're going to cover hygiene, which is really important. And so what I'd like to do is let's focus on the, the most important, let's focus on water. Um, as you can see, I have a bottle here of uh, water, and uh, what I wanted to point out is it's really helpful to find, and you can find these bottles um, in the wild, people throw them. Uh, you can also find soda cans, unfortunately, but they can be repurposed and used. And so, one of the easiest ways to purify water, and there are many, is to basically uh, put water in a plastic bottle, and what you do is you need to you shake it up because what shaking up does is it gets the oxygen going inside the bottle and then you put it in the sun. You can leave it in the sun for four hours and what will happen is the sun will disinfect and purify the water. Um, one of the things that you can do um, with uh, a natural straw, I have here some papaya um, sticks and papaya sticks, this is a green one actually, um, they have these holes, they're like natural straws and so one of the things that you can do is you can take cotton. I have some wild cotton here. You can take a t-shirt, but basically put it inside of here and then when you um, sip your water, you're going to filter out any impurities. So this is also very helpful. The other way you can purify your water uh, besides using the solar system, which is basically using the sun to purify the water, is you can actually put moringa seeds in it. That's spelled M-O-R-I-N-G-A. Now I have some moringa seeds here and I have them in a dried out avocado shell and so basically you can take these and peel off this excess um, fiber here and then just put it inside the, the bottle and this will also purify and disinfect the water. So you can use the sun to purify your water or you can use moringa seeds and you can uh, look up um, on the uh, internet how what a, mor a moringa tree looks like because this comes from a tree. This is actually used in, um, it's being used in Central America and it's actually uh, used widely in places like India and Indonesia. And so these are some ways for you to purify your water naturally. And what I also wanted to show you is, um, you know, a coconut. Now, most people would think that a coconut is un you're unable to open it in the wild, but that's not necessarily true because this, if you look over here, this is the top part where the stem is of the coconut. And actually this part around here, especially where this indentation is, this is a natural indentation, is very soft underneath. And what you can do is you can take um, a, a bamboo, um, branch and you something that's very hard and you can actually with a, a rock you can pound through here and actually puncture and get through to the coconut milk and coconut milk is very good because it has a lot of electrolytes in it what I did is I basically just put one of these papaya straws in it so you could drink from it so this is something that you could do as well to try to um, keep yourself um, hydrated with water and fluids now the other thing that I wanted to show you is, um, and this is in terms of some of the most important things, is uh, food. Um, and what you need to do is, as you can see, I have some seeds in here. I also have um, 
some cotton seeds and I like to collect as many seeds in the wild as I can because and you know for instance if you um, if you find a tomato make sure you save some of the seeds so you can plant it and you can find wild corn you can find um, peppers there's so many different things that you can find in the wild there's mango there's avocado uh, pineapple so many so many things you can find in the wild that you can actually use to eat and what you want to make sure you always do is save some of the seeds so that you can actually start your own little garden so that's something that's really important in terms and so the other thing that I wanted to show you is um, which is really important is you want to try to collect as many tools as you can and so what I did here is I wanted to try to show you these are all basically like I said this is a, a, um, a dried out uh, avocado shell you can use this uh, you can use um, pumpkin gourds as well and what I have over here is I've just basically gone around and I picked out a few things that you can use as tools and so if you look at this this is something that I found that could you you could use this as a saw um, from both sides and what I did is I basically I took a uh, plastic bag and I basically did some chain crocheting and then I made and actually have some over here so you can see it and so you know I you can do this out of um, uh, twine or you can do this out of straw that you find in the wild you can do it out of plastic bags so basically you can make all kinds of binding material out of things that you find in the wild and so I use this to show that you can make a homemade saw and then the other thing I wanted to show you is I have right here is it's basically a knife and I don't know if you can see it but it's got a really good uh, edge here a sharp edge that you can use this to cut and so I did the same thing where I took the the rope that I made from plastic bags garbage bags and this is actually a good cutting tool and so the other thing you can do is and this is something I also found in the wild these are old ceramic plates these are wonderful for sharpening your tools so whenever you find um, ceramic uh, plates in the wild you can use them and this edge here would be would be perfect for sharpening a knife so I wanted to uh, point this out that you can find all kinds of shards in the wild that you can use to sharpen your tools and so here's my little makeshift um, cutting tool and then over here what I have is these are palm fronds and so this actually would make good roofing material. Um, you can also use it as a fan if you wanted to start a fire. This also is good. You can use this for tender as well. This you can use to fan your fire as well as this. Um, and actually what I'd like to do is right now since I'm talking about fire, let's segue into the fire section. So I'm going to go back over here and interestingly enough you can actually start a fire with a clear plastic water bottle and that has like the round curved edge and with water in it. And basically what you do is you um, aim this in the sun and you, I have some tinder here. I'm going to actually show you some of my tinder. So this is one of my dried out avocado um, shells and then I've got some wild cotton and I've got some, you know, dried out leaves and I've got all kinds of things here that are very dry and they make perfect tinder. So essentially you could actually aim this towards the sun and then you can, um, and then the, what'll happen is you will, you know, look where the sun is shining and make sure you get it. I can actually see it's shining in here. I don't know if you can see it from the video camera, but basically you just keep it in the same spot and then eventually it'll start smoking and then you can blow on it and then you put your other tinder, like I have over here on the side, I have all these little, um, dried out sticks you can use those to actually um, put in the fire and get it going so I wanted to show you that you can actually use a water bottle to create a fire the other thing that you can do to start a fire is the bottom of the can I don't know if you can see it but it's also very shiny and so this um, this can was naturally shiny I didn't have to polish it up or anything but you could use this and you can actually see how the Sun is shining into the camera and this could be used to start a fire as well what you want to need what you want to use is really good dried out tender so anyway you can make fire without matches and this is probably one of the easiest ways is with this bottle and with this uh, the bottom of the and you can see it's concave so this actually makes like a good parabolic um, reflective uh, surface for the fire okay now what I also like to go back to the tools a little bit since I have some over here is I wanted to show you these are just basically um, you know some some sticks that I found and you can actually use these as chopsticks so you know this is something that these you can use these to make little shot chopsticks for yourself you can use them for straws as well you can use them for tender so you can find a lot of tools in the wild and the other thing I wanted to show you is I have this um, this is basically it's an um, you're gonna laugh. It's um, a disposable 
chopstick. And so what I did is I basically used my little makeshift um, cutting device and I made a little indentation here and I actually used this to crochet my um, my gar my mat with the garbage bags and also the chain um, the chain string that I use for uh, tying things. So you can uh, use these for as for chopsticks. You can use them to crochet. They're, they're very useful. And so what I also wanted to show you is a little bit about hygiene. Now over here you'll see I made this, this is basically a makeshift comb and I modeled this after combs that are, are used by Native American Indians and so it's almost like a pick if you look at it. Um, but it, it does uh, serve the purpose and you can use this to comb your hair. And so the other thing I wanted to show you is this um, this branch here. This is actually very bristly here on the end. I'm not sure if you can see this. This is called a Mizwak. And a Mizwak, it comes from, it's a toothbrush essentially and it's used in the Middle East and it actually has all kinds of antibacterial properties and it's good for, um, you know, uh, killing the germs in your mouth. And so this is what they use as a toothbrush and this is essentially a branch and it's from the Arak tree. So I wanted to show you that you can actually use something like this to brush your teeth in the wild and this is actually um, you know, it's really good for your gums and for your teeth. So the other thing I want to show you is this is a, a neem branch. Now neem is also very good for, um, it's, it's, it's considered to be like the pharmacy of, um, of India because it cures so many different things. But basically you can also use the neem branch as a toothbrush and, um, or a toothpick if you will, and it's actually widely used in India. So this is what they use in India, and then this is what they use in the Middle East to brush their teeth. And so what I also wanted to show you is uh, yucca. You can actually make some soap out of yucca. Now if you're in the wild, you can actually um, bang this on a rock or something and you can open it up, crack it, or try to use your cutting tool. But uh, if what you do is, and if you look over here, this one, you can see the edges, you know, once you get it open, the edges just peel right off. And so essentially, this is what is used to make soap. And this is what the Native American Indians use to make soap. And you can also use it for shampoo. So what I have over here is I have some water and I have some pieces of the yucca in it. And what you can do is, and if you get young yucca, it will actually foam and foam up and it becomes very soapy. But if you look in here, it does look like soapy water and it does have cleaning properties. So you can use this to clean your hands. You can use this to bathe in. You can use this to wash your hair. So if you, you want to try to get the young yucca so that it, it gets all foamy. Otherwise, if you get the older yucca like this is, it really won't get that foamy. But it does work and you can, you can actually feel that it does get the oil off of your skin. So this is what you can use to clean your clothes, to, to bathe in, to wash your hair. So this is the, uh, what I wanted to cover in terms of hygiene. You've got these different things that you can use to actually um, clean yourself. And then what I also wanted to mention is sage. Sage is also, you can use the sage twig to um, as a toothpick. Um, if it's big enough, you can use it. try to use it as a toothbrush. And then sage and sage leaves are good for sores on your gum or, or for stopping uh, wounds and bleeding and so forth. So it's really good to remember that in terms of medicine, you can use sage as um, sage leaves as, um, as a band-aid and you can use it for your mouth. And you can actually use it. You can take the leaf and then just use it as a, as a cloth to um, brush against your teeth and it works uh, just as good. Now, what I wanted to try to mention as, a, as I recap and, and get ready to close this up, is that we tried to create for this video the best of the best. We tried to show, because we actually do have videos that go into detail about the different types of um, filters you can make uh, from natural uh, products uh, to purify water. We uh, also go into all the different uh, edible plants in the wild. And so we do have videos that go into great detail about the different things that you can do. But for this one, we wanted to show you the easiest and the best of the best. And so, and in summary, one of the things that I wanted to also talk about is this uh, over here, I made this mat. Now you can make this out of, um, you know, any type of fiber that you find in the wild or you can make it out of uh, garbage bags. And so what I was going to do is make, for instance, a hobo stick. So I have here a, you know, what I 
call like the perfect hobo stick because it's long enough and it also has this uh, prong here which you can use um, to put all of your um, tools and all the different things that you don't want to lose and you know especially if you're going to be if you don't have a um, stationary campground and you need to move around and you're trying to get from one place to another this is what you can use to carry all of your uh, belongings that you don't want to lose so basically you can have all of your your very important things you can wrap you roll this up and then basically what do you would do is you could either use this or you could use some of the twine that you make um, from uh, natural fibers but this one's made from a plastic uh, garbage bag but basically you would close it up and then you would tie it to this now the reason hobos used a, the, a stick it was for multiple reasons one it was for protection to try to um, scare off um, wild animals um, the other was basically to carry their belongings on here they used to carry them in, in handkerchiefs they'd have all their belongings in the handkerchief and they would have it on the end here but they will always have like a prong like this because this is this will help you put your bag in a high place and then be able to get in a tree or something so that you can get it later on and this was a form of protection not only from people stealing it but also from wild animals because if you did carry around bits of food with you in your knapsack it, uh, animals can smell it and they'll try to get to it so this was a way of putting it in a in an unreachable place and that's why you needed to have this prong like this so that you could actually reach it and put it high up in a and tree that you or can't survive with what you have available to you in the wild and we thought it would be important to share this information with people who are in need or for people working with uh, humanitarian efforts in developing countries that you can share this information with them so they can learn that they can uh, uh, provide for themselves in terms of uh, living a healthy life by, by self-healing with medicinal herbs. We have a video on that as well by, uh, by you know, making their own homemade soap and so the, to teach them hygiene, to show them that they can start their own permaculture garden, that they can actually purify water naturally with either Moringa seeds or with the solar system which is using the sun and that they can uh, also use an empty uh, soda can to start a fire and that they can actually open a coconut without a machete. And so these are all the different types of things that we wanted to share to show people that yes indeed, you can survive in the wild with what you have available to you. Stay safe and stay tuned for more videos from Bridging Humanity.